let's guess a number between 1 and 100. Go right down the middle with 50. Number is lower than 50. All right, let's do 25. Lower than 25. Do 15. Lower than 15? That's crazy. Do 10. 5. 2. Damn, it was 3. That's wild. All right, so that we lost. Let's see if we can win. 50, 25, 35, 30, 28, 26. Hey, we win. There it is. All right. So it's a very simple game. It is just simply the computer picks a random number. And we, as a player, have to guess what it is. Computer helps us out by letting us know if the number is higher or lower. And if we take more than six tries, then we lose. So let's, uh, let's recreate this, shall we? Immediately, first thing we need, is we need a variable for the amount of tries. In this case, we have six. So I'm going to do tries equals six. And then we need another variable. We'll just call it number for the computer to generate a random number between 1 and 100. To do this, we have the math library, which has the random function here. So we can do 1, 100. This is starting point and end point. So that's going to take what it generates and store it in number. Very cool. And let's clear the screen, because we always got to get rid of all the clutter and start fresh. Let's go ahead and start ourselves a while loop it's gonna be we're gonna have a condition this time it's not just gonna be a while true do situation in this case uh, this is gonna be the game loop so we want to make sure tries is not zero so while tries greater than zero do now we need to go ahead and prompt the user what we're doing and print out tries so essentially we're printing out the the little interface here every time I'm gonna Set the cursor position, and try is going to be in the top left corner, so the good old 1, 1. We'll write tries, and concatenate our variable tries, so that we can have our number there. And then we're going to set the cursor in the middle of the screen. Probably go with 25 being the midpoint. I have a long thing here, so let's do 15 and 9. And say write guess a number and it helps to specify the parameters here so 1 200 and lastly for that we need to capture the user input so input equals read okay so we should have ourselves a little GUI here so let's run it there it is it's a little bit off-centered compared to the one that I have here so yeah, I'll just scooch it over a little bit to the left, let's do 13. Okay, so when we go ahead and type in numbers, nothing's gonna happen yet. This is gonna be our game logic. We need to have our if then statement here. And uh, let's start with the win condition here. So if tries, or not tries, if input is equal to number, then let's tell the user that they got it right. So set the position, and I'm going to print this down at the bottom or underneath the guess a number. So let's do 22 and let's go down a couple of lines. Since this is at in the line 9, we're going to do line 11. We'll write, you win. Hooray. We'll go ahead and sleep for a couple of seconds. And then we will clear the screen and kind of put the terminal back into its original state by setting the cursor in the top left corner. Now there is something to note here. Go ahead and run this. I'm actually just for making this simple, I'm going to print number here at the bottom left corner. So let's do 1 comma 19. Oh, let's do 1 comma 18. Oh, of course that didn't work because the clear is right there. So let's Go ahead and move this underneath that. There we go. Cool. So 23 is our number. I'm going to go ahead and type 23 to trigger that win condition. You'll notice nothing happened. And why is that? Or at least uh, nothing's happening. Well, one thing here is they're not actually equal. If I type 23, it's still not equal because this is a number. Let's do an else. 
because we also need to establish what happens when the user types a number that's higher than the computer's number. So 23 in this case. So we can do an else. And here's something cool we can do is we can also slap an if right in there. So else if input is greater than number, then we need to go ahead and let them know that it is lower. So let's clear the screen, set the cursor position, and I'm going to print this above the guess a number thing. So let's do like 10 and 7. Write the number is lower than, and then show them what the user typed so that they can see or remember what it is that they put. So let's give that a try. So it's 37 this time. We're going to say 40. And here is where we run into a problem. It, is, it should be greater than, but it's attempting to compare a number with string. And it's also why input couldn't be equal to number. So the reason why it matters is because the read function here is going to output a string and not an integer. If you remember in the first episode, I talked about this briefly, that you got to be aware of your data types. And this is why. You cannot compare an integer to a string, as it is saying here. So there is a solution here. We can either turn a integer into a string or turn a string into an integer. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn what we typed into an integer. And we can do that with to number. It's a nice little function. Now all it's going to do is the read's going to function exactly the same, but it's just going to be treated as a number. So let's uh, save that and run it. 58, so let's do 60. There we go. Number is lower than 60, so let's do 58. And you win. Now those things are working. Okay, so now we need to take care of what happens if the user gets a number that's too low. We'll do another else if, then it'll be the opposite. If the number is less, or if the input's less than number, then we will clear the screen, set the cursor position. We will write the number, give that a shot. So we'll do 50. There we go, 70. 66, cool. So the final thing we need to do, well actually there's two more things, is we need to create our game over and we also need to start making this number go down. But as you can see, when we put in our attempts, the tries never changes and we're in it forever. And also if you enter absolutely nothing at all, then the program crashes. So that is something we will need to take care of as well through what is called input validation. And we'll take care of that at the end. We will make tries start going down. And we can do that by going to the end of the loop and just go ahead and have tries subtract from tries. So we can do that by doing setting tries equal to itself minus one. So let's give that a shot. 50, 50, 50. Yep, it's going down. And we're out. And this is when we would hit the game over. So outside of this loop, we'll go ahead and do a, an if statement. So if tries is equal to zero, then basically if we ran out of tries, we're going to run this. Otherwise, if we didn't have this condition and we just printed it all out, it would still show it after winning. So we have to specify that they actually ran out of tries. We're going to set the cursor position, 2011. 2211. We will write game over. Set cursor position. And we gotta, it helps to print out what the number was. I think it's just kind of cool to see what it, if you were just like one off or something, just to kind of tease the user. That's always fun. And I'll just stick it right under the game over. So let's go with um, 2012. Write the number was. And then we'll print out number. Sleep for a couple of seconds. And then just like last time, we'll clear it and reset back up into the top left corner. Let's give that a try. I'm going to purposely lose here. Uh-oh. Game over. The number was seven. All right. So this is working. We got the tries. Now we need to do our input validation. So currently, if we put nothing, then, well, we're kind of screwed. So let's go ahead and fix that. I guess we can do that. We can have a conditional statement for if we add tries. Because maybe 
we want to make it to where if you accidentally press enter without entering anything, it shouldn't count against you and the tries shouldn't go down. So let's say if input, now there's two things here that I'm going to bring up. There's another data type for one that I didn't cover. And also there's another condition here. Just like we have the two equals, there's also the not equals. And that's going to be this little squiggly line above your tab key. And then equals. And then it will be nil. Nil, or in other languages it's null. But it basically just means nothing. Input is not equal to nothing. Then we will have the tries go down. And that's it. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. So let's see it and enter. Uh-oh. Input less than or equal to null. That's weird. Uh, did I save it? Let's try it again. Oh, wait. Compared number. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead. We need to also have a condition for what happens if it is nil. That's silly me. So I think we're going to need to turn this into an else if because it's going to have to be the first thing we test for. Otherwise, it's going to run through this and have that issue here before it even gets down to this point. So I guess in the very beginning here, we need to catch if there is nothing there. So if input is equal to nil, then we're going to go ahead and set the cursor position to, I don't know, 15 and 1. Write invalid entry. And that's it. Now let's give that a try. Enter invalid entry. There we go. And it doesn't go away. Bam. I'm spamming the enter key right now and nothing's happening. So that's good. Do it again and it's nice. It'll appear up there. You'll have your last guess here. So you don't lose your spot, lose where you're at. So very clean, very nice. What happens if we put in a letter B? Oh, look at that, invalid entry. Now, why do you think it works like that? Because obviously we're putting something here. Like it's not nil at that point. And there's a reason for this. Here is an example of what's happening here. Let's go ahead and comment all of this out. So I will show you a quick example of what's happening here. And what it really boils down to is this two number function. So for example, I'm going to say, write, enter a number. We're going to get input, then we're going to print out input. Simple. Let's run it. And 25. Now let's enter some letters. Print it right back out. Let's go ahead and do two number here. We're going to take what they type and turn it into a number. And we'll see what the difference is. So I'm going to do 25. Just like that. 25 again. Now let's do letters. Nil. The reason for that is because what this two number function is doing, it is it, it is attempting to convert what we typed into a string. It, it has to turn it into a number. And if it can't do it, then you get nothing. And that actually works out very nicely for our program here. Because now we don't have to worry about taking care of this nil issue to kind of kills two birds with one stone, which is awesome. Lua is really forgiving with that kind of thing. Uh, there's definitely other languages where you would have to manually verify that it is a number that the user is entering. So let's go ahead and just give our game a final run through here. Oh, actually, it would help if we stop printing out what the answer is. Guess a number, let's do 50. Lower, 25, that's lower, 18. Higher, okay, 20. Narrowing it down, 18. So it's one and two chance, either 16 or 17. Let's do 17. Damn, it was 16. Unfortunate, but it worked and we're back at the beginning, just like it should, should put us top left corner. That is the whole game. It, and it wasn't actually all that difficult, it was most of the length here was just the uh, if-then statements, the game logic. Otherwise, it is just that short. Uh, I am unsure which video will be coming out next. And a quick side note before we call it a video, I was suggested by a viewer named Squidinator193. He suggested we should make a Discord. Uh, it's not something that I have considered before, but... It seems like these videos are getting a decent amount of views and we're getting some interaction here. And I also agree that it would be a great place for people to kind of 
interact, people that are all here to learn some Lua slash computer craft, ask questions, and just post projects that you do. That'd be pretty cool. More details on that, but expect in a future video coming up very soon, I'm going to drop a Discord link, and we'll just see how it goes. So look forward to that. And that is it. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.